Was anybody worried that the sun wouldn't come up today? Anybody lose any sleep over that? Or that it would go down last night? Right, so there are certain things in the universe that we count on, right? That we know, we don't even think about, it's gonna happen because we are habitually experiencing the reliability of that event, which is one of those divinely ordered patterns of the universe. Today we're looking at the power of order in our 12 Powers series and how we are connected to that divine patterning, to that order that is underlying pretty much everything that goes on in the world. In Ecclesiastes, there is that saying about, for everything there is a season, right? So there's always this sort of seasons of our lives and rhythms of the world. And for the power of order to really take hold, there is a little bit of a kind of sense of not so much control, but actually surrendering into that, to recognizing that there are seasons in life, in our own lives, in, in the world as a whole, and that things come and go, things die away and are reborn. And so coming to a sense of, of comfort with that idea is a big part of working this power of divine order, of activating the power of divine order and getting this kind of rhythmic comfort with it. We often say at the end of our prayer of protection, wherever God is, all is I am and all is well, right? So there's a sense of I'm a part of God, God is everywhere present, and all is well. That's a, a statement of understanding divine order, of getting comfortable with the idea that there is an order, even in the midst of chaos. That's when we really work it, right? When there's chaos in our lives, when things are going a way that we don't want them to go, that's when the power really needs to be called forth. And so this divine order might be sort of in the background of your life when things are clicking along really smoothly. Hopefully you'll recognize it, be grateful for it, because that is order in action, but also be willing at, the t at times when things aren't exactly how you wish they, them to be, to, to just kind of let go and surrender and allow yourself to kind of fall into the possibility and the understanding that there is an underlying process, that there is a process that you're in, that whatever it is that you are seeking or wishing for is also seeking and wishing for you, is also looking for you. So that's all part of kind of the, the peace that comes with resting in this idea of divine order. So in the universe there is, and in the world, there are these beautiful images everywhere in nature, right? Like the seashells that have just incredible patterns on them. If you begin to just pay attention as you look around, especially in nature and in art, which often replicates nature, you get that sense of, oh yeah, everything does kind of have its place, right? There is a, there's a pattern and a beauty to the patterns and it's, and that, it's without effort, that just, it just comes. That's the way the world is designed. That's the way it comes. That's the way you are designed. That's the way you've come in, is this perfectly patterned whole being you have this whole, this whole magnificent system that happens within the human body, within the human mind, and then within this dance with spirit. So resting and looking at and noticing, I remember being on a, a walk recently in the Redwoods and there were a lot of ferns. And then I noticed how the way the dappled sunlight came through, that the, the rocks that were underneath the ferns had the exact patterns of the ferns on them and so it was just and then there was a little breeze and so I was watching how the pattern moved and just that uh, that awe of the universe right the awe of nature the awe of art is also the awe of ourselves the awe of creation and it brings us into that kind of relaxed space of ah there is a pattern <laughs> there is a knowing there is a something falls in place here when i let go a bit and allow and rest in the underlying truth that is order. So we're, as I mentioned, we're in the 12 powers. This power is exemplified by the power, or the color green, olive green. So it's kind of a healing color, a color that maybe brings you back to the idea of nature and it reminds you of the order in nature, the patterns in nature. That kind of observation, that simple observation can really bring our minds to rest 
into this, this space of knowing that all is well. And the, and the navel is the location in the body, which has all kinds of symbolism, right? So the navel is our, that symbiotic cord, that place from which we were fed as little infants in the womb. So it reminds us of the constant connection to the parent, right, to the source. So it, it's, it's the kind of a source-related power that, that we can't really understand order if we don't uh, recognize that, that constant symbiotic relationship, that constant connection that we have to source. And to take from that, to allow ourselves to receive from that the, the spiritual food that is always available to us. So that, too, sort of feeds our sense of, oh, okay, all is well, I'm getting my next meal. It's like when my dogs, you know, wake up and start doing crazy dances because it's like, is there order? Is there, it's 5 o'clock, you know, it's time, or whatever time it is, you know, their, their little clocks are, are set, you know, we're fostering Charles's dog, and for the first couple of weeks at 4.30 a.m., there was barking. And we said to Charles, what's with the 4.30 a.m.? He said, oh, well, that's when I got up. It's like, oh, great. <laughs> So it took a while to reestablish the order, right? For, her, for Dakota to fall into the order of our household that we don't get up at 4.30 a.m. So, um, so that she's now on that new pattern. And so it, it's, it, and it's the same for us, isn't it? Resting into those routines, into those ways of being, patterning our lives in such a way that we are aligned with the divine and resting in the knowing that we are fed from our source, that all is well, that we are always nourished that there is nourishment for us. So we don't have to get too excited about where our next meal is coming from, right? It's like when Jesus said, consider the ravens, you know? They don't worry about like a storehouse of grain. They, they just, you know, they know that their food will be there for them. Or consider the, lo the lilies. They don't, they don't toil and spin over what to wear. <laughs> you know, they're clothed in beauty. So considering those aspects of that natural rhythm is a big part of what helps us tap this great power of order to recognize that it is there always for us. Also, this power of order is, is symbolized by a couple of different people, biblical characters. There's always a disciple that's aligned with each power, and then Letty Hammock uh, assigned uh, women of the chalice, significant biblical figures, uh, female figures, with each of the powers as well. In this case, James, um, uh, or uh, um, hmm, what's her, Mary, I'm sorry, Mary of Alphaeus, is um, the mother of James, one of the disciples. There's two disciples named James. And Mary of Alphaeus was one of the women who really kind of took care of Jesus' ministry. You know, there was a group of women that was key to that ministry being a success. They took care of all the logistics. So think about it all. You know, you're traveling around with a tribe of people. People are going to need a place to wash their clothes. They're going to need food. You got to kind of have a travel plan. You got to go know, know where you're going and maybe even plan for where people will be gathered so that the teachings and the healings have an audience. And so all of that was done uh, scholars understand by this key group of women, the women who were there at the foot of the cross, that were there at the, you know, these really key times. So Mary of Alphaeus was one of those people who was believed to be Jesus' aunt, um, Mother Mary's sister. And so then her son was one of the Jameses. And the two James, one of them is the power of wisdom, and the other one is the power of order. These two are connected. Um, there's a neurological connection between the two. And so the two powers work together, wisdom and order work together. And so we're going to talk a little bit more about that as we unpack this a little further. So, um, so what about, you know, when things don't go according to plan? You know, in order, if those of you, if, if you're one of those people like me who, like, enjoys office supplies, anybody enjoy office supplies? <laughs> yeah, right? So there's a sense of innate order to that that just gives us sort of a sense of satisfaction, right? There's something about that, the cleanness of that, like the back-to-school supplies that the kids go and get. It's like, oh, I want to go buy Grace her, her school supplies, you know? Because there's something about that, like the blank sheets of paper to me and the pens. Of the, there's anticipation, but there's also order. 
And it's the same as it, the same sense of satisfaction that you might get when you clean out a drawer or clean out a garage or clean out a closet. There's that sense of decluttering and opening up space, space that is now kind of like a new blank canvas to be, to be used to open up the energy. So as you're working with this power of order this week, you might want to do that, you know, declutter your sock drawer or your junk drawer or, or take on the whole garage or whatever it is, because that also, as we know, is a key part of our prosperity teachings, opens up the flow of energy. And so as we open up the flow of energy, abundance can move through our lives. That's a, we're kind of creating the space, the orderly space for spirit to move, for energy to move, which is money, right? For, for money to move, for love to move, for whatever it is that we're desiring, whatever aspect of prosperity we're desiring to open up and move. Don and um, I think you helped Danae recently clean out the, what we call the dungeon here at, at the church. I know Danae kind of spearheaded that. And so, so underneath the offices, there's, you know, uh, there was a lot of stuff and clutter. And, and she took on the idea of, you know, reorgan let's get rid of stuff we're not using and reorganize and open up that space, open up that energy. It was an act of prosperity. It was an act of order. And so when we... When we um, Sometimes we get so set on how things need to go. Anybody ever do that? We get so caught up in our order that we need it to go a certain way or we feel like we need it to go a certain way, right? Some of you are nodding, right? We want to be in control, right? So the ego wants it to go this way, step A, B, and C, you know? And when it doesn't, it's, it, you know, sort of messes with our, our idea of, of, of the way things should be. But that's all just ego play, right? Piero Ferrucci is a um, teacher, spiritual teacher and a psychologist, and he tells a story about how he had a very important radio interview coming up. And so he thought about where he was going to be for the interview, and he thought, well, I can't be at home because the kids might yell or they might sing or something might disruptive might happen in the background. So I'll go to my office, top floor of my office building. I'll be away from the traffic. Nobody will be there. It'll be early in the morning. And so as he was coming in, the person at the front desk said, um, the plumber's working on the pipes, and, um, and he didn't think anything about it because it was you know, down in the, the lower end of the building. And so he went up for his interview, and he's all set. He's kind of nervous. You know, it's a really big one for him. And um, he starts getting into it, and they're about midway through the interview, and now it's getting really juicy. They're into, like, really important spiritual topics, right? Really good stuff, intense conversation. He's really focused, and, and the doorbell rings. And so he tries to ignore it, and he just keeps going, and, and then the doorbell rings again. And I can really relate to this because I used to have a radio show, and my dogs would bark, the mailman would come. You know, it's like, ah, <laughs> can't really control it. You're on the air, right? So here he is on the air, and the doorbell continues to ring and ring and ring. And so finally, he realizes it's the plumber, and the plumber yells loud enough to be, you know, recorded over the airwaves, Dr. Ferrucci, don't use the toilet. You'll make a really big mess. <laughs> that kind of broke up the energy of the <laughs> interview with that, you know, really important stuff that he was talking about. But, you know, that's the way it works, right? That's life. Life gets messy. Life doesn't go according to our plan, but it always goes according to the plan of the divine. And so there is, there is this underlying order. There is this underlying process. And there are lessons in those times, right? When things aren't, the, the apple cart, so to speak, gets upset in some way. And so we can, if we're, you know, earnest about this path, we'll continue to see those places and say, oh, okay. So he was able to look at that and say, okay, so I was being a little bit overly anxious and controlling about how this had to go. And it, had I relaxed into it, maybe that incident wouldn't have come to show me, <laughs> show me how I was being, you know, just a little too controlling about the situation. So, so order gives us that sense of satisfaction and routines can also bring us a sense of order and all the better when those routines have a spiritual basis, right? So, so I, I don't know what practices you might have, but have you noticed that when you do develop a certain kind of practice, there's a, there's a sense of muscle memory to it. 
that it's just an automatic thing that you do. Maybe it's you go to a certain place and you sit down for your meditation time every day or your prayer time, and it's, it's just kind of an automatic. It's the first thing you do, perhaps. Um, the first thing I usually do is my yoga routine, and sometimes, uh, most of the time I try to stay really present to it, but sometimes I just space out, and I'm in like, you know, the fourth pose because I always do the same routine. So it's muscle memory. It just sort of creates a kind of order. And so for that, that really can be very helpful to us to have these kinds of practices, even though we want to stay present to them, but to have those kinds of practices where it's just sort of, we know that it helps us in some way. We know that it's a good practice for us, that it supports our, our livelihood, our our, you know, our well-being in every way, physically, emotionally, spiritually, mentally, and so on. So whatever that is for you, whether you're thinking about establishing a new practice or you have an established practice, you know, allowing yourself to really fall into that rhythm and that pattern is a big part of how this sort of, what I keep talking about, this kind of divine order, this divine patterning is already kind of set. It's already there. And so you're moving into that groove. Or maybe you're resetting or recreating a new groove, a new practice, and, and letting go of something that doesn't really serve you. Maybe turning on the news first thing in the morning and having your cup of coffee isn't really setting the day the way that you want to set your day. Doesn't mean that those, that activity that may be important to you isn't a part of your day, but maybe that's not first, you know? It's just like in prosperity, when we, we, t we tithe first, it's, it's, a, it's a faith practice. It says that this is my most important priority. It sets the tone for our days and for our lives and for our abundance. It sets a kind of order to things. And so if we automatically receive and then say, okay, 10% is going out to where I'm spiritually fed, there, there's a kind of a practice and an order and a groove set to that that can't be shaken. You know, I sat with a financial planner recently and he tried to talk me out of tithing. And I was like, you know, I know we don't have a lot of time here and truly you're wasting your time <laughs> because there's no way I'm budging from that. So he's like, oh, okay. So then we had to move on. But from his left brain world of thinking. He couldn't understand really the principle and what our principle is all about, that there is, there's an abundance in that practice. That is, that there is a, a, a whole process of, of the law of circulation in that practice. And so it's those practices that we really hold dear to our hearts, uh, that those are the ones where we want to create that kind of routine, that groove, that muscle memory, that knowing that this is what I do because when I do this, I'm aligning with the divine. And when I align with the divine, there is that sort of things click in life. Things move according to a kind of grace. So it's, it's both this dance of, of that requires grace but also requires steps. You know, when we learn a dance, we learn the steps, right? So there's a little bit of a process of practice in learning the steps. And so we don't just necessarily, although we can free dance, and that's wonderful too, but if you're learning, particularly if you're learning partner dance, there has to be a process, right, of, of how this thing goes. So where's the beat and where are the moves? I remember being in a dance class once and my partner was, neither of us really, we were brand new to it, so we were just learning lessons. And, and um, he couldn't take the lead because he didn't really get what he was supposed to do. And I was getting frustrated because there was no lead, so I started leading and then we were stepping on each other, you know, so there was just a lot of this sort of, a lot of left feet, there are four left feet, I think, <laughs> in the game. And so there's, there's that kind of, um, process that we have to learn then. And so if we recognize in the process of divine order that the dance is with the divine in us, and we have to let the divine lead. So when the teacher stepped in, in my scenario, and, and started to lead, I could follow because I was getting clear guidance. So he was nudging me here and there, and I knew where to go. But otherwise, you just, you know, without the leadership, somebody's got to take the lead, right? And that's often what we do in our spiritual walk is we're not attuned to spirit so much. We're not so attuned to the divine. And so we start to assert our own control over the situation. We start to, to lead where there isn't a kind of sense of grace. So if instead our order is set 
to the patterns of the divine order that is the, the way that's already there, that's already available to us. And we kind of put our practices on top of that that allow us to match up with that. Then we can be in this dance where we are with wisdom and love dancing those two powers, where the wisdom gets the guidance gets it, and then we allow it to take the lead. And then we create the order, the, the practice. We learn the steps so that we can follow. Or we even sometimes set the steps, but we stay attuned to the divine so we know then, okay, is this the right way? So we step in this direction. We check in again with wisdom. Is this the way to go? And then there's a sense of order. Yes, we get the green light. We go further and so on. So. So it's that, that constant dance that we are in that is available to us that can create this sort of lockstep rhythm, this, this divinity that we want to be, this divine path that we want to be on. But as I say, there's a process, right? There's a process to learning and giving ourselves some patient birth to learn, you know, some, some kind of open space to learn the steps that we want to learn or that we need to learn. So getting back to nature again, it's like, you know, the, the spider learns to spin its web, right? And so you can see this, you know, there's maybe wind has come along or maybe the spider is learning to spin its web. So it's pretty good web. It's pretty, you know, beautiful web. But I've, I've seen some that are amazingly symmetrical, as you probably have too. And so, but it probably serves the purpose. It's, it, it catches what, what that spider needs to have to be nourished that day. It's so that there is a process, I imagine. I don't know how spiders, they, they innately kind of know how to do this. I don't know if there's a process of somebody teaching, but there is a, a sense of, of, of learning the, the process and, and maybe improving the process. So if it doesn't catch what you need to catch, Maybe you'll, you'll work on it and make a better web. So there's maybe a, a more beautiful web that you could create. One that has a little bit more symmetry to it and uh, the, the dew falls on perfectly and there's a sense of all is right and well with the world. So it takes time and it takes effort to get to that, that, um, that place where we are in that flow. Brenly told me about when she, you know, wanted to, well, she wanted to stop doing some things that she was doing that weren't working in her life, and she didn't really know where to go next, and a friend of hers gave her a Buddhist book that had the steps to meditation, and so she's, this is all brand new to her, so she just, she followed the steps, get out a candle, you know, put the candle on a table, light the candle, breathe, you know. So she literally followed all the little pedantic steps to get in the rhythm of meditation. And so it may be that for us that we, we kind of line out the steps or we read the instruction manual <laughs> to get a sense of order. And then we adjust as we go, right? Then we move ahead as we go to the next thing and the next until it feels like it's a, a natural dance. And it is innate in us, isn't it, to, to move, to, to move to the rhythm of spirit. It's like, have you ever watched the babies, that, the baby bounce dance? You know, they, the babies, they, like, they have that natural rhythm, right? They hear the music and they start bouncing. And so it is for us, if we just, rec if we just relax into the patterns that are set, if we relax into the divine that is, that is underlying every breath of our lives, every heartbeat, that is there for us to connect with, then we'll know what the next step is and the next step. So it's no mistake that, the, that wisdom is exemplified by James and order is exemplified by another James of the same name because they are so interconnected, because we must be connected to that, that lead, that guidance to know what our next step is and our next step, to feel that that balance and that rhythm, and then to let ourselves kind of move to that rhythm in the next step and the next. Have you ever seen a whirling dervish? There's a whole process to how those dances happen. Are you familiar with that, the Sufi dancers? They spin and spin and spin, and usually in there you'll see the big white and black robes. 
And um, well, it's something to see. So maybe look it up online. We could, I could have shown it to you. I didn't realize a lot of people hadn't seen it. But there's a, there's a whole process. So there's a way, of course, in which one hand goes to the heavens and one hand goes to the earth. And then the spinning happens on the left foot. So the left foot gets grounded. And then there is a turning, that's a whirling that starts to begin. But it is centered in spirit and, and sort of tied to both heaven and earth. So there is a sense of balance in the order of the whirling dervishes dance. And the, and the dervish usually wears black cloaks that represent the, the worldly, the, the material world. And then they shed those cloaks as time goes on sometimes. The dances are a little bit different in different places. But the white is, is sort of the purity of spirit. And so they end up in the, in the pure white robes and they continue to, to spin and spin in this way that they are focused and it's all kind of melding into divinity, melding into oneness. The dance is about this, the still point that T.S. Eliot talks about in the dance, that, that kind of, there's a still point, even though they're whirling, there's a sense of a still point that is balancing them, that is connecting them that is allowing them to do that without getting dizzy. <laughs> and so at some point they do fall down to the earth when the dance is over. And, and the idea is that their navel connects with the earth and they meditate there. So it's like a returning, a returning and a returning to that from which we came, a returning to the source and a deep connection, a deep meditation, a contact, a re, um, recalibrating of sorts that happens. And then they usually like very quietly sit up and continue to meditate until the whole performance is over. So it's really quite a, a profound thing to even witness because as you witness it, you kind of get into the spin of the order and the movement and the sense of oneness and the connection with spirit and the, and the back to that very early connection, right? back to that connection to source, that deep connection to source. And that's really what we want to do with divine order. So again, that's why wisdom and order are connected because it's, it's a getting back to the, the guidance, to the essence, and then patterning our lives accordingly, acting accordingly, learning the steps that we need to learn in order to stay the course that we desire. I remember watching my mom and my uncle who were both um, named best dancers in their class. My uncle was seven years older than my mom. And um, my mom would say things about my uncle that indicated she never got over some things from childhood. So she really never let go. She never forgave him for some things. And so their relationship wasn't great. Um, but, when, but I remember once I was at a wedding and they got out on the dance floor and I couldn't believe it to watch them because it, it was, I mean, they were fabulous. It was just so much grace across the floor. And it was so interesting to watch my uncle and my mom in this very connected dance of oneness. And it was, the connection was that they both loved to dance. The connection was that their brother and sister, despite whatever stuff is between them. And so the, there was a melding into the divine harmony. There was a melding into that sense of oneness. And so we too, in those places where there are rough spots in our lives, rough spots in our relationships, places of discord, we can find the sweet spot. We can find the connection. Maybe it is in a shared interest, or maybe it is in just a, lo a love for something that allows us to move into that kind of creative sweet spot, that flow, that dance. So whatever that is for you in your life, you might be something up for you. Consider how can I take up the partnership with spirit and be the follow to that lead and meld into that oneness? And how can I apply that then in my life to relationships, to areas of life that don't feel like they're working so well? Maybe your work area or whatever aspect of life feels like it's got like a little something's not quite flowing here. And see how you can bring this kind of surrender to the dance into that. See if you can find maybe some connection point, some sweet spot, some aspect you haven't thought about before. How are we alike? What is in common here? 
What, what are we all working toward? If say maybe it's a work situation or an organizational situation. With order, there is both a need for structure, but also a need for the ability to adjust, the ability to be flexible. You know, so what we were setting up yesterday for our um, abundance, the Make Way for Abundance workshop that was for the whole community and strategy session for divine ideas and revenue. What, when the finance team was planning that or the executive team of the board was planning that, we were talking about, you know, we wanted to give some structure. We wanted to give some, because we didn't want to come together, have fabulous ideas up all over the room and then leave. How many times have you been to some kind of session or seminar? Everybody feels great when they leave because, you know, we've generated all these great ideas and we're in that great space of vision, but then it has no feet. So we just leave, right? <laughs> and then we all say, what well, isn't that a great day? And then it just is history. So we were talking about how do we create a little structure here so that we actually leave with some kind of action. So we really honed it down to, you know, we're gonna, we're gonna vote on the top three ideas and then we're gonna have an action, kind of an action plan, but then somebody on the team said, well, not too much structure because if I know if it were me and you told me that this is the way I have to do it, then I'm not doing it. You know, and so it was like finding that, again, kind of that sweet spot. And this is what we do with order, you know. So there's a little bit of structure, there's some guidance, but it, it, there's some freedom there too. And so we had, you know, basic steps of, you know, come together as a team and here's the leader and here's, come up with your first action step in your first meeting and that was it, you know. And so now we left at the end of the day with, uh, with something in hand and with teams formed and with leaders in place and a plan to carry forth those ideas. And so it's the same with order in our lives. We want kind of a game plan. We want some practice steps. We want, a, we want an idea and an intention of where we're headed. We want to set some order, but we want to base that first on the divine. We want to open ourselves, which we did in our session yesterday, open ourselves to receive the vision that spirit has for our community. Open ourselves to receive the divine ideas as they want to come to us in symbols and color and form. And then we put it into a kind of order, a kind of action plan. So it's the same with our lives, isn't it? Wherever you are finding those stuck places, first surrender, first listen, first allow the lead to be the lead in the dance, <laughs> and then follow and then set the course of some of the steps that you'll take from there as you continue to dance in the partnership. Ah, so we've been on quite a dance. We've been a, a little bit all over the place. <laughs> but um, the one thing, one other thing that just um, really struck me and as I was planning this talk was really sitting, kept coming to me was the movie What the Bleep Do We Know? Does anybody, has anybody seen that? Yeah, it's an oldie, right? But it, when it came out, it was really very pioneering because it was science and spirituality together. We were learning about neural pathways, and, and that's a big part of, of order, too, is reordering how we think. So in the movie, if you remember, there's a, there's a kind of a character story about love and, and hurt and getting over the hurt and rage. And, and so she has all these feelings that come up and she's blocking any love that could possibly come to her. And they, and they show how the brain works. So there's a neural pathway there that says, when I remember this, there's a feeling of rage and then there's a feeling of sadness. When I remember this, there's an image, there's a feeling of rage and then there's a feeling of sadness. So we create this groove, a neural pathway, right? And so what we need to do is break that pattern and create a new order. So sometimes we need to reset what isn't working and to create a new neural pathway. And in order to do that, we might shift over to a place of blessing, of gratitude, of the things I learned, of the ways that, and, and to begin to feel into that too, what feelings we feel. I feel a sense of flow, I feel a sense of ease, I feel a sense of relief. And every time we, we have that repetitive pattern, that arm of the neural pathway moves from the old groove of rage and sadness and memory to flow to ease, to gratitude, to joy. So it's, you know, as we re, kind of reset ourselves to align with the divine and to be in this order, 
we, we reset, we, we create the sense of, of order for how we want to move forward in our lives in every way. So truly it is a dance. Truly it is a surrendering into the dance. And that is what we are all about when we are setting the pathway of order, when we are activating the power of order. So let's know that together, that we are in this dance together with spirit and surrender into that and yet also put the feet to the prayers that we need to do to enter into that dance. So together, my life is a dance in lockstep rhythm with the one. And so it is. Thank you.